you are about to listen to a Jason Burgos exclusive interview. Hey, Jason, what's up, man? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Can't even wait. <laughs> so, what's the the right way to say your name? Is it Zhao? Is it Zhao? What's the correct way? Zhao. 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 Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All right. Oh man, you're cutting weight. <laughs> you cutting weight already yeah. so early, or is it that's just your process? You no. take really gradually over time. Not like not like dehydrating or anything, but just like uh, when I'm like eating very clean, water loading, and all this stuff to suffer as little as possible next week. How are you feeling about like what? How do you li- like it to go? Like uh, on Monday you want to be? Cause I was talking to Chris Wade last week, and he like Mondays he was at nine, uh, Tuesday he was at six, and then like Wednesday morning he'd be at three, and then burn off the rest before weighing. Are you do, do you do something similar? Um, I do some I, I do sort of similar, but I like to wake on on the weights. I don't like to wake up uh, wake up weight um, Wednesday morning, so I like to go to sleep. Like I, I usually. The last couple of times I went to bed, like maybe two pounds over, and I woke up on late. And so you're a little, you're just over a week out. How how far off or off are you from the weight? Uh, around like sixteen pounds. Okay, all right, not doing my bad. All right, so I'll, I'll jump. I'll jump right into it. Um, so tell me a bit about your background and your journey into becoming a professional MMA fighter all the way back in two thousand five. You've been doing this a long time. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I started doing jiu-jitsu when I was a teenager in Brazil, but and I kept going. Like when I was a purple belt, like uh, I was like around like eighteen. I think it was eighteen, nineteen. I had my first fight, and uh, I never stopped. Like, um, I, but since I started training jiu-jitsu, I always did like a little bit Muay Thai, a little bit boxing. So I always like uh, had the. I always wanted to go into MMA, but we didn't have like we went like professional right away. We didn't have like amateur fights or anything like that. Now, did you, I mean, your English is fantastic. Is that just something you learned living in Brazil, or did you move to the States relatively early and learn to hear? I mean, your English is great. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I've been coming to the United States, like, uh, for training since, like, a very, very young age. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, but I moved to, I live in uh, New York State. I, I live here for the last, for the past three years. Oh, cool. Where do you live? I, I'm actually in the Bronx. Oh, okay. Uh, I live in Middletown, it's upstate New York. Yeah, yeah, no. But yeah. actually, I, com- I, I commute every day to the city for training. And where do you train yeah. out of? Say again? Where do you, where, where gym do you work out of? I commute to uh, to work at my head and handles. Oh, you work at Hanzo too. So I actually just uh, interviewed Jake Shields yesterday. He was telling me how he's working oh. on it too. Have you trained with him for your preparation both t- together for this fight coming up? You both have? Um, no, we haven't been training uh, together because. You know, there's like the possibility that we might face each other. We, true, we're yeah. friends. We talk every time. We, we're always sharing the same room and everything. We have been trained together. Okay. Now, you were able to score TKO win over a name fighter in Paul Bradley to start your season. Only only your fourth year of career. And it put you in first place in the standings currently with an excellent chance to make the playoffs. Uh, take me through that first round and how you technically, like the technical aspects of how you were able to score that TKO finish. Um... Everything starts with the preparation, you know, that starts from the inside because you got to believe it, you know. And also, besides that, you need to warm it. To do that, man, you need to warm more than the others. And I worked really hard. I warm and really bad. And I trained super. Like, but the preparation was awesome. I had, like, a, I had some very good striking coaches. I worked with uh, uh, Lenny Wilson, an amazing boxing coach. We worked, we worked with very good professional fighters, like, the, the, just be like Miguel Cota and everything. He's mm-hmm. one of these guys. Uh, I work with Jamie Crowell. He's also a uh, Hansel Gracie Muay Thai instructor. Very good. So we we set a plan, man. We set two tricks, and we were able to score the victory. Now, I, I like when fighters talk about things like tricks and traps. Like, what specifically kind of setup did you have for him? Uh, I played with the I played the distance. I made him... Uh, I made him uncomfortable with my movement, you know, and uh, my uh, my hand uh, and my my hand work, uh, my hand movement, mm-hmm. and um, he, I could I, I didn't give me like I didn't give him the distance, or he tried to come after me at one point and then moved around. So he didn't give me I didn't want him comfortable, you know, I didn't want him comfortable with my movement, with my fakes, and uh, and, uh, and I started picking him apart with the few shots, and then 
on one point I got like a really strong shot at him that he, he fell and just kept going to the finish. Now, everyone knows your grappling is fantastic, but after 13 years in the sport, like uh, you know I mentioned before, do you feel your striking has come along to the point just as good as your grappling and you are as complete a fighter as you've ever been? Absolutely. Um, the thing is, um, also my grappling, I keep working as hard as working my striking. Everything is super hard. Mm -hmm. But there is layers to the game, and every fight that you have, every year that pass, you know, you keep improving, you keep like a... Uh, you keep stepping, you know, like you, you keep getting like in new, like reaching new levels, and I feel like definitely my my striking right now it's like on the same level of my, my grappling as you can play my wrestling because my wrestling used to be my weak spot, but after I fought John Fitch, I started to work on that, and now and now I can guarantee you I'm a very very good wrestler, and I'm very comfortable every, anywhere anywhere any situation. Now, like I mentioned before, you are in first place because of the win against Bradley. Going into your fight next week against V4, do you think you will be a little more cautious to make sure you get the win? Because, I mean, theoretically, even if you lose, you have a good chance to, to get into playoffs. But, you know, just to get make sure you get that win, get the three points, and, and not take any risks and give V4 any opportunity? Or are you just going to fight your normal fight and, you know, ha what happens, happens? Um, I'm going to fight my fight because the thing is, and even for Bradley, I didn't went to for the break in the first round. Things happen naturally, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's how I'm going to fight. I don't want to get anxious trying to finish too early, but I don't want to, you know, be in a way that I need to, oh, I want to get, like, a decision. I, want, I don't want to, like, take too many risks. I'm going to fight my fight, you know? And uh, and I, I know, like, I'm already with, the foot, uh, with my one foot in the playoffs because you can see the matchups and everything. Mm -hmm. but I don't even think about that. I want to go there. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, right now, I know if I lose, I'm going to have another shot. I'm going to pretty much be into the playoffs, but I, I, that doesn't even come to my mind. It doesn't even really matter. Yeah. Now, is fighting VU4 any tougher than Bradley? And, you know, what differences in your preparation have you made from that fight against Bradley to this one? Yeah, we made the few adjustments, the strategy and everything, but uh, he's a tough guy, man. Like, uh, all of these guys in welterweights are all tough. You know, mm -hmm. there's no easy fight that's, like, I don't. I don't think you can find like a easy opponents fighting for a million dollars. I don't want that. Yeah. You know, to be the best, you gotta you gotta go there and grind against the, the best. You know, and he's a tough guy. Uh, in the on the paper, uh, Bradley has like a better resume. You know, like he's a all American wrestler. He fought like, against like he had tough wars against like really good strikers like Simulanka Rush. And he had a great fight in my opinion. He won against Okami. But it is on the paper. The paper doesn't count much once they. They close the cage and, you know, go for the fight. Now, you fought for World Series of Fighting before it was PFL. I mean, what's fascinating about this PFL season, at least so far, is that there's been a lot of notable names that have lost in their fights. You know, uh, Eddie Gordon, Chris Wade, Tiago Tavares, a lot of known names. Um, do you think this season so far has shown, like, the impressive depth of the PFL roster and that there are a lot of talent that are pretty good that haven't even, you know, touched the, the UFC yet and are, are rising stars like yourself? Oh, absolutely. I found the UFC before, but the thing is, like, I was very young and, yeah. and not late at the time. But the thing is, like, um, man, you know, like, uh, being the UFC, of course, UFC is amazing. It's the biggest stage so far, but uh, that doesn't mean that all the best fighters are over there, you know. Like, there's a lot of talent outside. A lot of guys that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone over there, you know, and that's one of these guys. Now, I'm glad you brought up the UFC because I know there you fought at, at middleweight at one time, which when I was researching, I was like, holy moly, how do you fight Rafael Natal? But um, you also fought several times at lightweight. Now you are at welterweight. Do you feel that now you are your best weight class or are you open to maybe moving back down to lightweight, you know, after the season, eventually down the line? No, no, man. Uh, lightweight, uh, to be honest, it's so great fighting lightweight, you know. But my life used to suck a lightweight. You know, so there's no way, man. I feel like I cannot imagine myself like uh, uh, getting married with my fiance, having like a kid, and uh, my final life with. Uh, I think they they would hate me. I would, uh, would get divorced like in two weeks. It wouldn't work. Yeah. You know, like my life gets terrible. I feel great fighting, but it cuts too hard. I, I'm a big boy, man. You know, like even like the fighting white ways to walk around the same way. You know, like the walk around. Right now. So I'm just a uh, welterweight. Like, it's definitely much more smooth for me and it's a great fighting and only that but my training camp is better for lightweight i was putting I, I was training 
to go away, to lose weight. Mm. Uh, as a welterweight, I'm trained to get better, and now you see the results, you know. Now, you know, you know we, we talk about a little bit about the way and all this stuff. Um, speaking of that, the, you, how you feel, do you like the quick turnaround that the PFL season is, you know, has set up in this format? Or, or how, you know, how's your body feeling physically going into the next fight? Like, do you like it? Do you wish you had a little bit more recovery time? How do you feel about these quick turnarounds? Uh, it's tough that you cannot stay out of the diet for too long, right? Which is good. Always after a fight, we like to eat for a while and everything. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, take a little rest, but uh, I was, uh, I had, I, I had like, a, I, I was lucky, to be honest, that I was getting down and down my fight with my husband, uh, like a smooth score, to be honest, but uh, I wasn't like, I, I fought, uh, I think, Thursday, right, and the Monday I was back to the academy, so I was, I feel good, my body feels good, I'm no injuries or anything, because of course, the weight cut and all this stuff, the little, like, time, like, but nothing that I cannot deal with. Now, uh, Greg Savage from the PFL, you know, who sets up a lot of interviews for me, um, he told me that people in the industry feel you are favorite to win, it win it all, and get the million at 170. Do you feel like your favorite? And, and if you do, why? First of all, I would never get into something if I don't feel favorite. Mm-hmm. You know? I'm ready. I'm ready to do it, man. Like, of course, I can not like a... Uh to the future, I cannot even see what's going to happen next week right now, but I trust myself, I believe it. If you don't believe in yourself, you're even more fighting in the wrong sport. So, and I believe myself, I trust myself, I trust my training, you know, and I have the clear instinct. I want it, man. I want it more than anything. Now, 13 years in in the industry, um, you found the perfect weight for you. you, you're feeling complete as a fighter. Do you feel that V4 is going to get, and anybody in this season and in this, this tournament that, that's coming up are going to get the best version of you that they've ever seen. Absolutely, because you know what? Uh, that's one of the... I, 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 had, I had this talk with an old coach of mine, with Duke Rufus, right? Mm-hmm. And we were talking, we saw each other last year in, uh, in New York. And he was like, yeah, man, some guys mature earlier than fighters. Mm-hmm. Some guys mature later, you know? Yeah. And I, mm-hmm. me... Uh, personally, I'm a cheerleader. I can uh, you know, I used to think, man, uh, you know, this guy's the champ of this, the champ of that, and I don't know, you know, but, you know, everyone has a different path. Some guys mature later. You see, like, uh, guys fighting in the 40s and doing great against mm-hmm. young, guy, uh, young guys, and I'm definitely one of these guys. I'm 22 right now. I'm still young, of course, but I definitely mature later as a fighter because I start very early, and I'm great, man, you know, like, I'm, Working every day, I work really hard. I commute like four hours a day to train to be the best, the best I can be, and I'm it's paying off for sure.